Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today we are catching up on the AI chip wars, which if they get any more intense are really going to start being reminiscent of Game of Thrones pretty soon. So let's start with the most recent story, although just one of many from this week. Yesterday, Bloomberg's Apple whisperer Mark Gurman reported that Apple is planning to overhaul their entire Mac line with a new custom silicon chip they're calling the M4. It's obviously the fourth in their line of M chips. And this one is specifically focused on AI. Now, what's not surprising is that Apple is thinking about AI and leveraging their custom silicon to try to win an advantage in that space. In fact, a lot of our conversations about Apple's strategy or likely strategy when it comes to AI have been about how it is trying to, on the one hand, increase the power of chips in its devices, and on the other hand, shrink powerful models such that they can be running on device without having to touch the cloud. What is surprising about the announcement is that the M3 was first released just five months ago. That's an extremely short turnaround, even for Apple, which has a reputation for making its old technology obsolete very quickly. According to sources, the M4 chip will come in at least three varieties, and Apple is planning on updating every single Mac model with it. Now, obviously, on this show, we are focused on the AI dimension of this, but just to understand the broader business dimension for Apple, their Mac business is tough right now. Mac sales fell 27% during the last fiscal year, and even during the holiday period, revenue was flat. Between that and their seeming sort of strategic flailing, given their recent ending of Project Titan, their electric car project, their unclear AI strategy... Overall, it feels like Apple needs to get things back on track. Investors seem to like this report. Apple had actually been down 13% on the year, very different than the other AI-focused tech stocks, but on Thursday, saw their share price go up 4.3%, which was their biggest single-day gain in 11 months. The names of the M4 chips include Donnan, which is the entry-level version, a middle-powerful version called Brava, and a top-end version called Hydra. These are their code names, so they might not be called that when everything comes to light. In terms of getting more information, sources expect us to hear more about these chips and the devices that they will run in at the Worldwide Developer Conference, which is coming up in June. Bloomberg also writes, as part of the upgrades, Apple is considering allowing its highest-end Mac desktops to support as much as a half terabyte of memory. The current Mac Studio and Mac Pro top out at 192 gigabytes, far less capacity than on Apple's previous Mac Pro, which used an Intel processor. The earlier machine worked with off-the-shelf memory that could be added later and handle as much as 1.5 terabytes. With Apple's in-house chips, the memory is more deeply integrated into the main processor, making it harder to add more. So, one of our competitors in the Game of Thrones for chips is Apple, but an old player seems to be coming with some new tricks as well. Ars Technica writes, Intel's Gaudi 3 AI accelerator chip may give NVIDIA's H100 a run for its money. Intel claims 50% more speed when running AI language models versus the market leader. So basically this week, Intel held its Vision 2024 event, and their big reveal was a new AI accelerator chip that they're calling the Gaudi 3. Now, Intel is pursuing a number of different strategies simultaneously. They're increasingly competing with TSMC as a chip fabricator, i.e. a builder of other people's chips. But the Gaudi 3 suggests that they're not giving up on their own chip business either. Now, it is important to note that although Gaudi 3 is projected to have faster performance in terms of training time and inference than NVIDIA's H100, H100 is no longer NVIDIA's most powerful chip. The H200 is not out yet, but is expected basically any day now. And then there is, of course, the Blackwell B200. One of the big questions is what the price of the Gaudi 3 will be. Analysts think that it could be an attractive alternative if it can come in meaningfully under the 30 to 40,000 in H100 costs. I think the big takeaway from this Game of Thrones perspective is that Intel seems willing to fight on multiple fronts at once and is putting out some pretty compelling products. Moving on in our battle, Google has announced its own ARM-based CPU to support AI work in data centers and is also introducing a more powerful version of its TPU or Tensor Processing Unit chips. The new CPU is called Axion and will be initially used to support Google's internal AI workloads before rolling out to business customers of Google Cloud later this year. Google said that the Axion chips are already powering YouTube ads, Google Earth, and other Google services. Said Mark Lohmeyer, Google Cloud's vice president, Axion is built on open foundations, but customers using ARM Anywhere can easily adopt Axion without re-architecting or rewriting their apps. Reuters reports that Axion ARM-based CPU will offer 30% better performance than general-purpose ARM chips and 50% more than Intel's existing processors. Google also discussed their overall cloud strategy in terms of what chips they offer, specifically announcing that they are not offering AMD chips. Again, Mark Lohmeyer said, at this time we're deploying NVIDIA GPUs and our own TPUs, and he added that they are also supporting Intel's new central processing unit, which he claimed was, quote, good for inferencing certain workloads. Lohmeyer said, we offer those three and we feel good about that combination for our customer base. Meta also made a chip announcement, which was perhaps understandably a little bit overshadowed by the fact that they revealed that Llama 3 was coming soon. 
But the company says that their new Meta Training and Inference Accelerator, MTIA, is a, quote, big piece of its long-term plan to build infrastructure around how it uses AI in its services. Meta said in a post, Meeting our ambitions for our custom silicon means investing not only in compute silicon, but also in memory bandwidth, networking, and capacity, as well as other next-generation hardware systems. Meta had first announced their V1 of the MTIA in May of 2023, and said at the time that they were focused on providing those chips to data centers. That V1 was not expected to be released until 2025, but Meta now says that both that first version and a new MTIA chip are in production. Writes The Verge, Right now, MTIA mainly trains ranking and recommendation algorithms, but Meta said the goal is to eventually expand the chip's capabilities to begin training generative AI like its Llama language models. Over in the world of Amazon, CEO Andy Jassy discussed the chip wars in his annual letter. He wrote, To date, virtually all the leading FMs have been trained on NVIDIA chips, and we continue to offer the broadest collection of NVIDIA instances of any provider. That said, supply has been scarce and cost remains an issue as customers scale their models and applications. Customers have asked us to push the envelope on price performance for AI chips, just as we have with Graviton for generalized CPU chips. As a result, we've built custom AI training chips named Trainium and inference chips named Infertia. In 2023, we announced second versions of our Trainium and Infertia chips, which are both meaningfully more price performant than their first versions and other alternatives. This past fall, leading FM maker Anthropic announced it would use Trainium and Infertia to build, train, and deploy its future FMs. We already have several customers using our AI chips, including Anthropic, Airbnb, Hugging Face, Qualtrics, Rico, and Snap. So the point here is not necessarily that Amazon announced anything new, but that the battle is significant enough that it warrants mention in this annual letter. But what about the geopolitics of chips? Obviously, this is a huge global issue, and we've gotten some news recently in that respect as well. The Biden administration is continuing to distribute money through the CHIPS Act, with the latest recipient being TSMC, who are receiving a $6.6 billion grant to increase their U.S. manufacturing. TSMC is, of course, building out their first major U.S. plant in Phoenix. It's actually two plants, with this money being used to build a third. And as part of the announcement, TSMC said that they're increasing their total investments in the U.S. from $40 billion up to $65 billion. This is so far the second biggest grant under this program, with the first being the $8.5 billion in grants, plus $11 billion in loans, that were announced for Intel a couple of weeks ago. Now, as an aside, TSMC is doing well right now in general. They saw a 16% rise in quarterly sales, which outstripped projections, and also was the fastest growth in more than a year. Another chip exporting nation, South Korea, is investing around $7 billion to stay competitive in chips as well, said South Korean President Yoon. Current competition in semiconductors is an industrial war and an all-out war between nations. Writes Reuters, Yoon has set a target for South Korea to become one of the top three countries in AI technology, including chips, and take a 10% or more share of the global system semiconductor market by 2030. Yoon said, Just as we have dominated the world with memory chips for the past 30 years, we will write a new semiconductor myth with AI chips in the next 30 years. So lots and lots going on in the AI chip world. Like I said, this is a battle that is not slowing down even a little bit. That is going to do it, however, for today's AI breakdown. Until next time, peace.